Hello and welcome back to the series on named entity recognition for the purposes of the digital humanities. And in this kind of fork, uh, the 09 fork, we're looking at the Holocaust, developing an NER pipeline for Holocaust documents. Now, in this video, I'm going to go through and we're going to be adding in a couple different components to our NLP, our main NLP object that we've been working with for the past few videos. In other words, we're going to develop the rest of the pipeline out. We are going to be adding camps, concentration camp model, a ghetto model, an events model, and an Eastern European locks model. All this is going to come early in the pipeline because these models I've trained to be binary classification, meaning that they only have one uh, one object that they look for, one label, one entity that they ap apply to the pipeline. And I know these are fairly accurate. They have a really good precision and a really good recall. So I'm comfortable placing them early in the pipeline. I'm going to talk about placement in this video, I'm not going to talk about how I train these models in this video. If you're watching this video in January, keep an eye out because I'm going to be attaching a Jupyter Notebook series to this whole NER series for both uh, Holocaust data and also medieval Latin data. So what I'm going to focus on this video is not the models themselves and how they were trained, what they were trained on, rather the, the placement of them in the pipeline and reasons for that. If you want to know how the models were trained or you want access to the models, check out the Jupyter Notebook that's going to be attached to this soon. So let's go ahead and just jump right in. And I'm going to be including all this in one video because a lot of these steps are a little repetitive. You've already seen them, but again, stick around and you'll understand why I'm putting them where I'm putting them. The first thing that I want the model to be able to find is my concentration camp uh, model. And so what I've done here is I've dropped all my pre-trained models into a subfolder called pre-trained. So we're going to do slash pre-trained uh, models underscore, and we're going to do the camp NER. That's my um, concentration camp model. And we're going to change this to camp NER, and then we're going to add that into the main pipeline. And this should allow us to fairly easily add in, oh, I should specify that it's this. And this is going to allow us to easily now have Treblinka, if we run this whole script, remember this little uh, sample text we have down here, if there's no errors, we should be able to see uh, Treblinka being now labeled as a camp. So we're going to go back on lesson 0904, and we're going to make sure that we add in the ability for our model to recognize uh, the different kinds of entities that it's not familiar with. And so I've changed the conk underscore camp to just identify camp in general. That way it can grab um, both concentration camps and extermination camps, which have uh, distinctions in the literature. It can grab both of them without any, uh, without any issue. And then we're going to add that camp to the main NLP, uh, the, the actual strings. So that way the model has camp as a label and it's set. And while we're at it, we're going to be adding in event and we're going to be also adding in ghetto in this video. And I think we're, that's going to be it. Uh, the Eastern European NER is going to be adding in the location tag, which it's already familiar with. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So what we're going to do is we're going to be working on this pipeline here, the the concentration camp pipe. And I'm putting it first because I've got this model very well trained, like I said. And I know that it has a good precision and a good uh, recall. So we're going to call this camp uh, NLP. And we're going to load in dot, so it knows to go into the directory, pre-trained models, which is where I have it located. And it's the camp NER model. And then we're going to make sure that uh, this is called camp NER. So it grabs the NER component from that pipeline. And then we're going to add it into that. And we're going to call it, let's call it camp NER. So that way we actually have a, uh, a, that component there. And if we run this, we should see that um, everything is working hopefully correctly. And we don't see it being found because we haven't allowed for it to be passed through uh, this initial function. So we need to include into this function, we want to include camp. Uh, we want to include all these different uh, things that are going to be earlier in the pipeline. And then again, like we saw below with this function, we need to add a little thing so that it can see if it's in the previous labels, then go ahead and add it as well. And we are going to um, say elif old label is in previous labels, then do that. Uh, it's going to basically take that object and append it. And now when we run this, it should work correctly. And again, we see Treblinka being correctly identified here as a concentration camp. Um, so that's what we want to uh, to do. And we're going to do the same thing now with our ghetto model. 
our event model and our location model. And this is gonna allow for the, uh, the pipeline to have these stronger components earlier on that I know are gonna be fairly accurate. So we're gonna call that ghetto uh, NLP. And again, copying and pasting is always a bad practice in, um, in Python or any programming language for that matter. But I'm doing it here because I know what I'm doing and I know that this is gonna be a little bit more clear uh, when somebody looks at it instead of having a function that does all these things by passing three different arguments each time. So I've got the ghetto uh, NER model added to it. Now I'm adding in the events one. So we're gonna call this event NLP and we're gonna add it there. And we're gonna, it's the events underscore uh, I believe it's underscore NER, it is. And then we're going to call this event NER, and that's going to grab the NER component, just like we saw before. And we're going to call this event NER. And then finally, what we're going to do is we are going to really improve uh, this pipeline by giving it a pre-trained model that I have for Eastern Europe. Uh, we're going to call it Eastern Europe NLP. It's a little verbose, but what are you going to do? Uh, so Eastern Europe NLP, and I've also given it the title good, probably not uh, probably not a good title for it, but I liked it, so I named it good. And that way I knew that that was the, the correct model to be using. So Eastern Europe NER, and that's going to grab the NER component. And once again, we're going to drop that in there. Eastern Europe NER. And this should just be popping out a location tag. So we shouldn't have anything unusual there. And now we've got these four custom pipes added, or custom uh, models added into the pipeline early on. So now we run this, hopefully we don't have any errors. This is a good way to just kind of test. And we shouldn't see any different results because I haven't added anything in. We're right to now add some text to this. So um, the Warsaw uh, ghetto is in Poland. We can add that in there and we should be seeing uh, Warsaw ghetto being flagged as a ghetto. And in fact, we, we do, we see Warsaw ghetto being outputted as that. Now that we have this kind of all working and we we're kind of, I'm, I'm kind of happy with the way this pipeline has turned out. Uh, we have a couple custom functions. And like I said, I'm gonna explain in a later video how to add those custom functions into the, into the, oops, into the actual uh, uh, factories so that you can have a packageable uh, model. But I'm gonna go ahead and close that tab. I think I got all my pre-trained models into it. I do indeed. Now comes the fun time of kind of demoing this. So let's go ahead and open up, let's open up that text file that we saw in the last video. And I'm gonna make that my, my text object. So if you remember from the last video, I believe it was, I introduced you to this very small test file. It was a oral testimony. We saw a whole bunch of problems with the output. I'm now gonna use that as the test text. This isn't anything formal. It's gonna go through though and hopefully have much better results with these few custom, easily trainable components. And again, like I said, I'm going to be going in and explaining, it looks like we have an error. Something was not in the string store. Uh, um, it, so that error was existing because I forgot to add in all of the English model uh, labels, even the ones that we're not using into the blank model uh, strings. And the reason why that's essential is because even though we're not expecting them as an output, they are being entered into the equation when we bring in the spacey, the, the spacey in core web small model. So it needs to at least understand how to label them, even if those labels are going to be removed by the custom functions that we have. And now if we run this, we can, let's do a little thing here. We can do print len doc dot ints and it'll let us know how many entities that it actually found in total but we're going to run it across the same text that we looked at in um, the last video or maybe two videos ago and it's going to take it a second because it's a relatively large uh, text and it's also got um, a lot of stuff in there so if you look down here we've got 733 entities found and these are looking a lot better so not only do we have person being correctly identified still Randy Goldman, Erwin Baum. We also have dates coming out. So July 6th, 1994, uh, this is good. We see certain mistakes still exist, like the uh, United States Holocaust Memorial Museum being identified as a location. Contextually, that actually could work because it is a specific location, even though it's an organization. I'm not too upset about that. That's gonna be easy to account for. But if we go down the, the list, we see, we see NORP, Polish. That's what we would expect, two years. That's a date or some kind of time understanding. Uh, we see things like th uh, 34 being coming uh, coming out as a date. 
uh, approximately 1933. All these are great things coming out of the spacing model. We still see a couple mistakes like age 48. That's probably in context of person's uh, age, not a year. Uh, but if we keep on going on the list, we, we see some stuff that does look uh, quite good. And we'll start seeing soon uh, some of the stuff that I uh, that we added into this custom model. So let's scroll down and you'll see camps coming out at some point. Uh, at some point. Oh, here we go. Uh, so Kristallnacht, it found it as an actual event. That's good. That, that was not coming up before as an event. That was coming up, I believe, as a person. Um, if we go down the list, we're still seeing persons being identified correctly. Uh, let's see if we see anything. Uh, that we've added into it. Okay, so Warsaw Ghetto. So it's flagged that as an actual ghetto. And in fact, it is a ghetto. That's what we would want to see. And if we keep on going down the list, we see ghetto being talked about again. Uh, I'm not seeing a whole non-Jewish NORP. Um, that's correct. Polish NORP. That's correct. I'm happy with all that. Russia. Good. It grabbed that lock. I wonder if it grabbed any of the locations that uh, we kind of, our model was an instrumental on. Things like Plonsk. Things that, oh, here we go. Yep, Plonsk. There we go. Uh, things that were really being thrown off before are now being correctly identified as their correct entities. That's the result of our Eastern European location model that we've added into the mix, um, which was trained on uh, about, I think, 30,000 annotations of Eastern European place names, uh, the small towns in Poland, things like that. Uh, we gave uh, a model a good deal of data to learn off of all of that. And again, you can kind of see the results for yourself. These look pretty good. This is by no means a formal test, nor is it intended to be. This is just to kind of eyeball and see how the model is doing to know if this is a worthwhile endeavor. And again, for being a relatively small model, this is showing really fantastic results. Keep in mind, there are no, um, there are no word vectors injected into this right now. This is a, a, a pipeline of various machine learning models. Uh, for NER that are all kind of working uh, sequentially. Uh, what we're going to use this model for, as we're going to see in later videos in this series, is for generating a really good, what we would call gold standard um, data set using a training data set using Prodigy, with the goal being that we can use this to then train a final model with word vectors. And the idea here is to have one model to kind of rule them all. So instead of trying to have all these cascading models, all this is going to be used for deployment. So you can actually have a good model that takes up very little space and your computer and is computationally inexpensive. All that's going to be used to inject our 1.3 bill, uh, uh, gigabyte word vectors into a new model and with a gold training set of probably around 10 to 20,000 that we're going to be able to annotate very, very quickly through Prodigy, which comes out of Explosion AI. That's going to be it for this video, and that's going to wrap up this Holocaust NER series for at least a little bit. I'm going to be now be going back and doing the same thing with uh, Lessons 10, in which we're going to be working with not uh, English, but rather medieval Latin. So kind of doing these similar things, but to solve different problems. And to solve those different problems, um, you have to come up with different solutions. And so that's going to be where the focus is going to be at for um, the next probably three or four videos in the NER series. And I'll come back to the Holocaust and the medieval Latin kind of at the same time. When it comes time to creating that gold standard annotation data set and injecting word vectors into a final model, and then using that uh, final model and packaging that final model and packaging this model. Because keep in mind right now, if you try to save this to disk, it's not going to work. You're going to have to package it correctly. And again, I don't want to do two different videos for two different series. Um, I'd rather do them all at the same time. And I encourage you, even if you don't know Latin, to check out the Medieval Latin series because it addresses a lot of the problems of inflected languages and a lot of the problems of working with non-English NER and non-English NLP, for which we don't have a lot of data sets. That's going to be it for this video, though. Thank you for listening. If you've enjoyed it, please like and subscribe down below.